Here's your weather briefing video for this Sunday, August 24th. I'm meteorologist Bill Murray, and it's hard to believe it was 20 years ago we were talking about Hurricane Katrina. Uh, on this date, Wednesday, August 24th, 2005, the system was in the Bahamas, strengthening. It became Tropical Storm Katrina at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Uh, of course, would cross the Florida Peninsula, intensifying as it went along, crossed into the Gulf, uh, eventually hit the Mississippi Gulf Coast, uh, and was a devastating, deadly storm that rewrote the uh, history books uh, back uh, 20 years ago. We'll have a retrospective on the storm tomorrow night on Weather Brains. John Gordon has put that show together. Robert Ricks, the forecaster who wrote the apocryphal uh, HLS, uh, the uh, Hurricane Local Statement, uh, will join us. Uh, he was working at the National Weather Service in Slidell when we heard it. We could not believe our ears that Sunday afternoon. And uh, everyone looked at each other and said, could it be true? And it turned out to be true. Uh, so we'll talk to Robert about that. Some other special guests, including Mark Suddeth, uh, tomorrow night on Weather Brains. It will be uh, a sobering and um, a very, very special show tomorrow night. Uh, just uh, uh, one of two shows tomorrow. We're going to actually have Kevin Laws on at noon with his team that's putting on the uh, Integrated Warning Teams meeting in Huntsville at the National Weather Association in September. Uh, early on this Sunday morning, as I recorded this for you, uh, about 6.45 uh, here in the uh, Alabama Weather Network studios in Birmingham, uh, we see low stratus uh, across a good bit of Alabama this morning uh, as we still have a very moist air mass in place, a few showers and thunderstorms showing up on the radar now. Uh, lining up uh, from Jackson County down through Madison County into eastern portions of Morgan County, uh, beginning to see a few showers showing up on the radar now uh, in uh, the southern portion of Winston County, uh, back through northwestern portions of uh, Walker County near Carbon Hill into uh, Fayette County. Uh, they'll um, continue to probably uh, fill in that zone ahead of this cold front, uh, moving into the I-59 corridor in the next couple of hours. A few showers showing up now in uh, Macon and Bullock counties down in uh, the I-85 corridor as well. We'll see more scattered showers and thunderstorms developing during the day. Temperatures across the state at this hour, uh, generally in the 70s. Uh, 75 this hour at Gulf Shores, 75 at Huntsville, uh, and you can uh, pick your location and find a number in between. Uh, dew points are now generally also in the lower 70s, air mass near saturation uh, across Alabama. Uh, yesterday we saw some uh, wind gusts uh, into the, the, the uh, double digits uh, above 10 miles an hour across the eastern part of Alabama. That's relaxed a little bit this morning as that trough is kind of uh, lifting out to the northeast. Uh, over the next few hours, this is our convection allowing model showing those uh, showers dropping into the I-20 corridor here through uh, the uh, brunch time today. Uh, a few showers beginning to pop up over south Alabama. Uh, coverage about 20 percent today, but if you get under one of those heavy downpours, you will know it. Uh, lots of heavy rain, uh, some lightning, so be careful. Uh, could see some flooding. Uh, the air mass over Alabama is still very, very moist. Those showers and thunderstorms will diminish tonight. Uh, they'll uh, be completely gone probably by 9, 10 o'clock this evening. Um, and then we should have a calm and uh, fair night over the state. Should be a beautiful morning tomorrow. Um, I think we get through the day tomorrow without any showers and thunderstorms. The dry frontal passage, the cold front, a real bona fide cold front for August moves through. Uh, some more showers and thunderstorms with the secondary front um, here on Tuesday. Will that happen? It's hard to say. We'll be watching that closely as we go through time. Um, we'll see how that goes. Uh, nationally, heat advisories out west. Uh, they're breaking records right and left. Got some air stagnation advisories there, air quality alerts in the Dallas area. Uh, heat, uh, no, I'm sorry, uh, rip current uh, advisories along the east coast of Florida. Otherwise, the nation pretty quiet. We see our front uh, there from eastern Canada down through New York and Pennsylvania into the Tennessee Valley. Uh, got a non-tropical low there off the east coast of the United States. That's brought record rainfalls to uh, the uh, South Atlantic coastal region. Flash flood watches have been in effect. They've had seven inches of rain, over seven inches of rain, at Charleston, South Carolina. They broke rainfall records two days running. Uh, there, uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, four inches on Friday, three inches on Saturday. So um, some amazing rainfall there. 
Uh, severe weather today possible ahead of the front in uh, Pennsylvania and New York, uh, back in uh, the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles through southwestern Kansas into eastern, o- and to eastern Colorado on the back side of that front. Uh, that goes away tomorrow uh, and Tuesday as well as things calm down across the nation. We get into sort of a, a fall-like pattern. The flash flood risk today hanging on there in the eastern Carolinas uh, with a slight risk, also some slight risk uh, there uh, in the Plain States, back out into the Rockies and uh, in the western United States. Uh, Florida, marginal risk today ahead of that front, also uh, in Pennsylvania and New York ahead of our front. This is Fernand, uh, named at 4 o'clock yesterday. Uh, n- not a very organized system. Top winds 40 miles an hour, as we'll see in a moment. Uh, about 300 miles southeast of Bermuda, moving to the north-northeast. Uh, that system off the southeast coast, not tropical in nature. Here's the path for Fernand. Could become a 60-mile-per-hour tropical storm. Uh, central pressure now, 1,010 millibars. Uh, moving on to the north-northeast, uh, beginning to move over cooler water, getting into more shear, will begin to weaken, um, and uh, won't really amount to anything uh, here by Friday. Um, it will be moving out over colder water. Our next system, 99L, is approaching the islands now. The Hurricane Center now has upgraded it to a 40% chance of development. Uh, Gabrielle, the next name on the list, we'll watch it as it moves into the eastern Caribbean. Uh, Some of the models develop it. We'll be keeping an eye on it. If you're moving, if you're lucky enough to be going to the beaches, Alabama, Northwest Florida, just a beautiful time. Uh, water temperature still in the upper 80s. Rip current risk will be low. Those yellow beach flags will be flying. Temperatures will be uh, lowering back into the low to the middle and upper 80s. Uh, overnight lows. How about 67 Thursday morning? Boy, that's uh, fabulous. Rain chances will be uh, negligible Monday through Thursday along the beaches. The steering pattern across North America shows a big trough over the eastern United States. That's responsible for that cold front and the cooler than normal temperatures that we'll be seeing. High pressure remains uh, anchored over Texas and uh, back into the southwest where they've got a monsoonal pattern. That trough deepens as we get into Thursday and Friday, only uh, uh, continuing to uh, strengthen that stranglehold that will be on the uh, cooler temperatures over the eastern part of the United States, and we'll take it. Here's the uh, lower humidities, too. You see uh, the blues there over uh, over Alabama in the southeast, indicating uh, a brief reprieve from summer's heat and a little taste of fall as we get into the early and middle parts of the week. The, the forecast uh, through the early part of the week shows that secondary front bringing a few showers into Alabama Tuesday, but uh, dry for Wednesday, Thursday. Looks like Friday's dry, too. Some moisture levels begin to um, uh, return as we get into the weekend, though, and um, we'll begin to see uh, rain chances slowly beginning to creep back into the forecast here uh, by Thursday, Friday, well, really Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So you could see a chance of some showers and thunderstorms. Uh, rainfall amounts across the country, uh, I didn't really pause it there for you, but heaviest uh, there, Arkansas back into Oklahoma along that front, uh, offshore mainly with that coastal low. But here in Alabama, uh, a quarter to one inch of rain, some uh, amounts over one inch over southeastern Alabama will be possible through next Sunday. These uh, temperature departures off the year I thought were impressive. Uh, we start to getting into 10 to 15 15 degrees below normal uh, by the end of the week. And this is what it looks like on the seven day. Uh, rain chance is pretty much gone out of the forecast for the northern half of Alabama for Monday through Thursday. They return Friday and Saturday. But how about 76 on Tuesday for places like Russellville, Huntsville, uh, Scottsboro? 76 on Tuesday, 78 on Wednesday. Returning to the 80s uh, on Thursday and Friday. Uh, temperature across north central Alabama will be two or three degrees warmer than this. But how about 50s uh, there for um, Tuesday night, uh, Wednesday night, and Thursday night? We'll take that in Alabama in August for sure. Not quite as pronounced for south Alabama, but uh, a little reprieve from the extreme southern heat uh, that we're ex- that we've been experiencing as well. High temperatures falling back into the middle 80s. Overnight lows will be in the middle and upper 60s, even in south Alabama. Well, that's your weather briefing video for this Sunday morning. I'll have notes on the blog and, uh, of course, complete updates throughout the day right here on the Alabama Weather Network.